So what we have here is my block on my 1938 Plymouth. It's home, finally. You may notice here in the background is my 53 Chrysler. It's on a trailer and I've got to load it up because I'm taking it to its new owner. Uh, sadly, she's got to go. Uh, I only got parking for two cars and I'm trying to prevent uh, hoarding vintage Mopars. It's easy to do because they're readily out there if you're looking. If you stop looking, you don't see them, I guess, but if you kind of got the Mopar fever, you just you keep looking. So unfortunately, the 53 Chrysler has got to go. It's loaded up. I'm taking it to the neighboring province. I live in British Columbia. I'm taking it to Alberta. It's going to be going south of Calgary. If anybody's over in that area and you see this car driving around, it used to be mine. Um, headed out in a couple days. So stuck at home for too long and a road trip sounds pretty awesome right now uh, to go meet a, a guy and, and deliver the car. Why not? It's just a, a great excuse to go on a road trip. It's a lot warmer today than when you saw me drag this engine out of the car. It was last November and it was chipping ice off the driveway. It's very nice today. Uh, it's about 80 today. Fahrenheit. Um, this engine stand, I gotta give a shout out to a, a good friend of mine, Rob. Um, he hooked me up with this engine stand. Thank you very much. It's awesome, it's gonna see good use. Passing through an area here you might recognize, uh, Rust Valley Restorations TV show. Uh, we're in what we call Rust Valley, I guess is what they call it on the TV show here. And their business is just right here on the left as this big truck goes by. Their shop is right up there at the end. That's their shop right there. And see the sand, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a sand cliff up there. And that's where they're chopping down all the trees and logging some of the cars that are up there. Maybe over here on the left, you can see Mike has a field full of cars. I don't know if you can see it there. No, you can't see it. So we got another probably seven hours of driving to get to where we're headed today to drop off my 53 Chrysler. But we're actually not going to do it all in one day. We're going to stop and stay the night here halfway. So. All right, we're just driving down the highway here and uh, enjoying the scenery. And we got to this point, you can see, this is as close as I can get with my phone here. There's three mountain goats in this photo. And on the bottom, um, just off center to the right, there's a mama and her baby. She's protecting her baby there in the rocks. I can see it in person, but unfortunately I cannot get any closer. All right, it's early Saturday morning. We're in beautiful Golden, British Columbia. Sorry, we're in a bit of a industrial park here, but uh, one of the local contractors here um, did me a solid and let me uh, park my uh, truck inside his locked compound here. So we had a nice safe place for the Chrysler to spend the night. Appreciate that. Just tucked her back here between a couple logging trucks. Everything looks good, still there. I disabled the truck and the car and the trailer. I wasn't really concerned. You can't get the car off the trailer. There's a fence back there and a pile of dirt. But anyway, I think it's better than staying, uh, leaving the car overnight in a, in a hotel parking lot. You just don't know what kind of riffraff's gonna be going through there. But, well, this is my other Dodge. Yeah, I guess a little bit of a Mopar nut, I guess. It's 98, uh, 24 valve Cummins. I got really good fuel economy driving here last night. I did about uh, uh, 
235 or so kilometers and I uh, I burned 32 liters of fuel loaded this car is not a light neither is that trailer the car is about 4,000 pounds and very hilly terrain boy am I impressed with that truck fuel economy is just awesome all right let's get the show on the road head east We're here in uh, southern Alberta. Uh, 53 cries of reminders is now in the hands of the new owner, Phil, here. And Phil's been gracious. Uh, we've unloaded the car and brought it into the garage and even brought me a cold beer. We had a fantastic trip. Phil, enjoy the car. Uh, it's been looked after. I know you'll look after it. There's the keys. Thank you. Enjoy. I will keep. Thank you. Thanks very much. It's been a pleasure dealing with you, Phil. Thank you. So we're, we're almost home. It's been, it's been a long, long day. We're back in BC again. So how many hours have we been on the road today? Uh, we left our hotel room at uh, about 5 a.m. And uh, it's almost 9 here now by the time we get home. So that's uh, 16 hours of... Uh, we haven't been driving for the, the entire 16 hours, but most of it. Um, we drove to the fellow's house, delivered the car, and um, stopped for lunch, stopped for a couple of coffees. This is a Canadian... Uh, habit. Staple. <laughs> Staple, yeah. Um, we delivered the car to Phil there, the new owner. He, uh, it was neat, you know, meeting another guy that loves Mopars. It's, it's a pretty neat community. I'm, I'm glad to be part of the Mopar community. Any of you watching here, you're part of it too, so thank you. Um, uh, the guy told me he felt like he knew me. He felt like I was his friend. He knew me very well because he watches a lot of my videos and that made me laugh because that's the second or third time I've heard somebody say that and it, it's kind of humbling in a way because it makes me realize how many people uh, I've kind of, uh, I guess I've touched their lives a little bit and um, they're watching me. Some people are saying, that one guy in Australia was telling me that he was watching me on his TV with his wife <laughs> on the big screen so he could see my cars up close and that feels kind of kind of strange but anyways, if you, you feel like you know me because you watch my videos, thank, thanks again. Appreciate you watching all my videos. So, so how do you feel now that your car is gone? Uh, I, I feel good. I do. I, I'm, the car went to a good home. The guy is a, a, a car nut his whole life. He's had hundreds of cars. Um, and, you know, life to me, it's about making memories. Uh, I don't try and hang on to everything I've ever done. I'm not a hoarder. Well, I, I got my fair share of Mopar parts, I guess. I'm kind of hoarding those a little bit. Try not to. But I, when you're ready to move on, it's okay to let stuff go and move on. And, and I got a great new car. Uh, to replace this one and it's just it's a new chapter and, you know that car we had lots of great memories uh, as a family traveling it together and going for ice cream and it was in the kids weddings and uh, you know Kyle took it to high school it's it's been a very active part of our lives for the last four years we've owned it for in a bit and uh, it's okay we'll all look back on it fondly it's a it's a memory now I see that the trailer came home empty um are there any more cars coming home <laughs> No, no more cars for a while. I'm good, hon. Um, I, <laughs> I'm good. I got, I got a couple of great cars. I got my 38 Plymouth to work on as well. And today when we were driving, I wanted to summarize. I didn't get it. We tried. We tried to get wildlife in the, uh, in the, in the video to show you guys. It was hard because you're ripping on the highway. We're doing 65 miles an hour. All of a sudden, there's a bear. Ah, what do you do, right? You can't hammer on the brakes. You're towing 4,000 pounds on the back of the car. So we, I, I, overall, we managed to, you saw, we, we stopped, we, we videotaped there, we didn't videotape, we, we iPhone digitally taped, um, three uh, mountain goats, there was three adults there, I know um, there was probably a Billy or two, that's the male, and then there was a nanny, we know one was a nanny because she was protecting her kid, she had a very young little goat beside her, tucked in her side, and I couldn't get close enough, I wish I brought my other camera or something where I could zoom in, all I have is my iPhone, so we saw four goats we saw I saw five bears and you were sleeping so you probably saw what did you see two uh, I saw two you saw two bears I saw five oh black bears we 
turned around and tried to film one, but that... We saw one on the road. I did pull off. I turned around and tried to come back and get the video tape of the bear there to show you guys. He was gone. Um, and then um, I saw a herd of about five elk as well. So great time traveling through the mountains there in Canada. If you ever get a chance to come this way, do it. Don't hesitate. And if you're coming through the Trans-Canada Highway, you're going to be in Camels, where I'm from. They'll look me up. Send me a message. So I think that's a wrap. I think I started this video talking about my 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 new my block is is home, and uh, it's summer now. Boy, this road, Goodness, is, this road is rough. Um, it's summer now, and I don't know how much time I'm going to dig into that block this summer. I'm not really in a hurry now. It's taking so long. I guess I might as well make some difference. Maybe drag it out another few months. Um, I probably will start to poke away at it, but it's probably going to turn into a winter project more than likely. So I want to drive my 38 Chrysler and enjoy it as much as possible. So I'll get back on that engine. Thank you for watching today. Thanks for coming along and being part of our adventure. Um, we'll be in touch. Next video, I'm gonna go back into my 38 Chrysler this week. I'm gonna get that Marvel Mystery Oil. It's been soaking for a week in the cylinders. I'm gonna try and get that cylinder PS uh, pressure back up again. So we're gonna get that oil out and we're gonna test it. We're gonna get that block back together over the next few weeks. Um, we're gonna start getting it back together. I think that's about it for a while, so thank you for watching. If you like what you see, subscribe and um, hit like as much as you can. And I appreciate it, guys. Uh, stay tuned for the next Mopar video coming up in the future. Have a good one.